The pitching slate for tonight in Daily Fantasy Baseball is unhinged good. Like, absurd. One of the best pitching slates I have seen in a very long time. I know we have opening day kind of stuff that does slam things, but, like, you look at the guys on tap for tonight, and the pitchers we will not discuss for today would have been the top guys on several slates throughout this week. So it is going to be a fun one. The problem is... We got to whittle that list down, decide who we want to be highest on. Can we find the salary and our hitters to afford those guys? They do come with lofty salaries. How do we navigate all that and fill out good lineups? I think I've got a, a good feel for how I want to rank them for today. So let's dive on in and get you set for this Friday main slate. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Here to break down Friday's 12-game main slate with locks set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. And the good news is we don't have any weather to discuss for today. Do some winds out of Coors Field at 10 miles per hour. It's Coors. You're going to be there anyway, but bump it up a little bit. Uh, some slight winds out in Oakland, but that doesn't tend to matter too much. Also, as always, is cooler there. So it's a pretty good slate. And honestly, wherever you may be listening, it sounds like a fun weather night uh, for you as well. So hopefully we can enjoy some good weather for tonight and enjoy some good DFS as well. We'll dive into the pitching preview in just one second. But first, a quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Coming up later on today, got a NASCAR podcast breaking down the NASCAR Cup Series first trip to Worldwide Technology Raceway Gateway. They're going to be there later on today. Breaking that down uh, on the same feed, USC via Austin Swaim will be up later on as well. So make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed to get all those podcasts right as they go live. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. The NBA Finals are now underway, and it is now your chance to score big on FanDuel Sportsbook. Throughout the NBA Finals, FanDuel is giving new customers $200 in free bets, guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Bet the money line, point spread, player props, and so much more. Plus, you can combine your bets for an even bigger payday with a same-game parlay. If you haven't tried FanDuel, now is the perfect time to give it a shot because the only thing sweeter than watching the finals is cashing in on all the action. Make every game feel like Game 7 with FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel, official partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and in select states. First online real money wager of at least $5. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable free bets that expire 14 days after receipt. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text NEXT STEP to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-89-979. Or in West Virginia, call or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for today, it is done. We got Shane McClanahan at the top of the heap. He is $11,200 on FanDuel, followed by Joe Musgrove at 10-9. Garrett Cole is 10-8 with Corbin Burns at 10-5. Logan Gilbert is 10,000. Shane Bieber down at 97 facing Baltimore. Tyler Anderson is 96. Chris Bassett facing Anderson is 94. With Nathan Eovaldi, Max Reed, Merrill Kelly, Dane Dunning, Zach Eflin, and Yusei Kikuchi as the others at $8,000 or higher. Eflin not officially announced yet, so check back on that one later, but... I would expect him to be the guy for there. And it's a, it's an amazing pitching slate. So I feel very firm with my rankings. And I think the most firm take that I have for today is that Garrett Cole is a top guy. And I feel great about that. Cole is at home facing the Tigers, which is the best match if you could possibly concoct for a right-handed pitcher. They have a 77 WRC plus against righties with a 116 ISO. Their strikeout rate is 25%. I don't think you can get any better than that from a matchup perspective. And Cole is getting better as the season goes along. Over his past five starts, Cole has been using fewer changeups and more sliders. And the whiff rate on that slider is 10 percentage points higher, according to Baseball Savant. The ex-WOBA against it is about 50 points lower, and it's led to a 34% strikeout rate in that time. 
That's led to a 2.30 skill interactive ER for, ERA for Cole. He has hit double digit strikeouts in three of the five games he has started. That's even with three of those starts being on the road. He is at home tonight. I don't think there's a better matchup for a righty right now. And so I shouldn't have to explain too much more here. I've got Cole projected for 9.4 strikeouts, even on a loaded slate. That is a top mark by a full strikeout. So to me, the easiest thing on tonight's slate is deciding who's number one. And that will be Garrett Cole for me, despite it being a loaded slate overall. The second pitching slot behind Cole is more complicated. For me, it's Shane McClanahan versus Corbin Burns. And McClanahan is at home against the White Sox, Burns at home against the Padres. I'm going to give the slightest edge to Burns here. There are a couple of reasons for that. And the first one is length. McClanahan has topped 95 pitches twice so far this year. He said 100 once. Burns has gone 95 plus pitches in every start except for his first start this year. He's gone 105 plus pitches three separate times. So the length edge goes to Burns. I view the matchup as being pretty equal. McClanahan gets the White Sox. They are still good against lefties, but they're pretty banged up. 22% strike rate for the active roster against lefties. Burns facing the Padres. They have no power against righties so far this year with a 114 ISO and a 23% strikeout rate. So from a results perspective, I'd rather have a righty facing the Padres than a lefty facing the White Sox. Narratively, I would go that way as well. I do have McClanahan projected for slightly more strikeouts at 8.4, whereas Burns is at 8.0. So McClanahan is the edge there. That's why I have them in the same tier. But I just feel better about Burns personally. And they're both behind Cole, but they're both elite options. So I do love both them here. And it is, you know, splitting hairs to go with Burns over McClanahan. But I feel pretty good about that. So to me, it's Cole at the top, followed by Burns, followed by McClanahan as the top three pitchers for today. For the value play, I'm going to talk about Nathan Eovaldi here. I do think that Dane Dunning is a strong consideration for this slot as well. So if you don't like Eovaldi, I'd be fine going there. We'll talk about Dunning and why he's not above Eovaldi in th things to watch. But Eovaldi's matchup is sick. He's facing the A's, and we know their issues. They have an 82 WRC plus against righties with a 115 ISO, and they're striking out plenty enough as well. The bigger question here is about Eovaldi himself. Obviously, he has been getting rocked at times this year, mostly when I've used him. And when I haven't used him, he's been lights out. 3.77 ERA. But some really poor starts in there again. Sorry, it's probably my fault. We have seen the Evaldi tinkering. He's thrown fewer curveballs his past six starts, and his strikeout rate has gone down. But he has had some really nice individual outings. He had 11 strikeouts against Seattle. He had a complete game against Baltimore. He did get torched by the Astros right before those two games while using the same approach. And four of his six starts have been at home. But the two road starts are both quality starts. So I don't care too much about the home run splits here for Eovaldi. I haven't projected for 6.5 strikeouts tonight. That's pretty strong for a value play and actually ranks fifth on this slate, despite having a lot of really good options. That's enough for me to use Eovaldi at $8,800. He won't be a high exposure play, because I think that Cole and McClanahan and Burns, even Bieber, guys like that all have absurd ceilings, but I will use Eovaldi in a time to jam in some more high salary batters. And that is a key consideration for me today as we talk about the stacks because I feel very firm in the Yankees being the top stack for, for the day. Uh, my conviction in Cole being the top pitcher is about similar to my conviction in the Yankees being the top stack. I would put them above Coors as well, personally. They're facing Elvin Rodriguez, who did have a good start last time out, but that's been a big exception for this year. In 11 and two thirds big league innings, Elvin Rodriguez has a 42% hard hit rate allowed with a 49% fly ball rate. This comes after he wasn't necessarily lighting it up at AAA either. He had a 22% strikeout rate there, but a 13% walk rate. Plenty of fly balls too. Last year in AA, Rodriguez had a 5.83 ERA, tons of fly balls there. So we can say with a good amount of confidence that Rodriguez will be a fly ball pitcher, we can say that for sure. Probably not going to get a ton of strikeouts, and that's a prime combination for stacking. He is facing a beat-up offense, but the Yankees get to play in the best park just for pure dingers in the league. The temperature, pretty solid at 76 degrees as well. So I think we have to be high on the Yankees in this spot, even with some alternatives from a stacking perspective. 
Now, the question here is whether we can buy into what Matt Carpenter has been doing, because Carpenter is $2,500. And if we want to get to Cole with Aaron Judge in the same lineup, we got to find value. I think that Carpenter actually is in play. Hit a homer off Shohei Otani yesterday. He was hitting the ball really well in AAA before he asked for his release. He had a 338 ISO there. He apparently has been reworking his swing across the offseason. So I'm very okay buying in. It could be because I'm desperate for value at hitter for today, but I've always liked Carpenter to my uh, detriment in the past uh, from a DFS perspective. I might as well be here and see if it all sticks. Uh, Matt Carpenter, I think a very fine value play at 25. I feel better about him than I do about Joey Gallo, who I'll probably use too, but I think that uh, Carpenter very much okay with me for today. I'd put Coors second on the stacking list, specifically with the Braves. Uh, I'm off the Rockies here against Max Freed, but the Braves get Chad Cool, and Cool has, I'm sorry, cooled off, uh, if you'll allow me that one after his hot start. Cool let up just two earned runs in his first three starts. He has let up now two or more earned runs in four of six sets. A lot of that is due to some slipping with his bad at ball numbers. The hard hit rate allowed for Cool is up to 41%. Fly ball rate, 39%. And it's tough to make that work with a 19% strikeout rate, especially when you're pitching your home games at Coors Field. There are some guys who handle Coors pretty well and can navigate that effectively. And Cool had a great first start at Coors Field. But he let up two bombs in the second. He left after three innings in his third start. And I think the Braves here are just too good to pass up. So I think the Yankees are one, Braves two, and both those teams, very, very good options. But similar to the Yankees, we do need to try to find some value guys within this stack. I think we can use Michael Harris, uh, even assuming he bats ninth for tonight and assuming he does play, which he might not, but I'd assume that he does based on the way they use him so far. Harris, really good numbers in AAA before his promotion. He had a 201 ISO there and also stole 11 bases. So I don't always like to use guys batting ninth, in large part because most of the guys batting ninth aren't good enough to be used in DFS. I think Harris is, based on his AAA numbers, based on his speed. He's $2,500. He's at Coors Field. So he's going to bat ninth. That's okay. I don't care too much. I think that he is still a very good option for DFS for tonight and someone where I do believe in the talent. So Michael Harris, to me, a good option for DFS in the bottom of the order. For the Braves, it makes it easier to get to your stud pitcher plus a Yankees and a brave stack. I think the third stack for value, if we're looking for value to try to get in Acuna, if he plays, get in judge, et cetera, et cetera, it has to be the Rays. They are definitely a worse offense without Wander Franco. We have to account for that for sure. But it also bumps some others up in the order, and I'm willing to lean on the value they provide here. They're facing Vince Velasquez, who had been demoted to the bullpen, but he's back in the rotation now with Dallas Keuchel being gone. And Velasquez, unfortunately, did get demoted for a reason. Namely, again, letting up too much hard contact. And it's a typical story here for Velasquez. Overall this year, he's let up a 45% hard hit rate with a 45% fly ball rate. Across his seven starts, he let up three plus earned runs four separate times, and he let up five twice. Had a three-armor game against the Yankees, too. And we've seen this in the past for Velasquez, where... He lets blot hard contact, but this year it's actually been a bit worse uh, in those key areas than it had been previously. Plus, we've seen some lesser teams like the Ray or the Royals get to Velasquez. So we do bump down the Rays without their best hitter, but I think that's reassuring to see that some not elite offenses have still gotten to Velasquez this year. And I think that the Rays should have enough guys to make things work here. So the Rays, if you want some value, I think they're a good spot to go to outside of Harris, Carpenter, et cetera, et cetera. They do have some lower salary guys who can hit for some power. We've got Jimon Choi at $2,900. Kevin Kiermaier is 27. He's still finding a way to hit for power this year, which is surprising, but I'll take it. Um, Taylor Wallace doesn't have power, but he can swipe some bags. Brett Phillips, if he plays, he's not the kind of guy I want to use uh, against Velasquez, so he does strike out a lot. Prefer some lower strikeout guys against Velasquez, but... Between Choi, Kiermaier, maybe Walls, maybe Phillips, I think we'll have a lot of value here. We give value with upside, and I think that's what I want. So the Rays give us flexibility to get some of the desirable plays on the Yankees and the Braves without having to avoid the elite, elite pitchers for tonight. Moving on to things to watch, did want to talk briefly on Dane Dunning as a potential value pitcher. 
he's at home against the Mariners and they're a pretty low strikeout team. That's my main issue with Dunning. I like him as a player. I think he's pretty good. They are letting him go deeper in games now. So I can get on board with Dunning for sure. The matchup was the one thing that kept me from getting too jazz, but I do think everything else lines up pretty well for Dunning here. The Blue Jays are facing Chichi Gonzalez today. The implied total for the Jays is very high, and I won't push back on that, but it's not the kind of pitcher I like to stack against because Gonzalez gets a lot of ground balls. His ground ball rate in AAA this year is 56%. So you can stack the Jays for sure, and I don't mind it, but that is the reason why they're behind the Rays, behind the Yankees, behind the Braves, is I'm expecting Gonzalez to have a pretty big ground ball rate for today. Finally, I'm not opposed to some Guardians here. They're facing Bruce Zimmerman, who has started to slip a bit after his super good start to the year. And hard contact is a key issue with a 42% hard hit rate and a 40% fly ball rate. The Guardians, not a super powerful team against lefties, so I want to be selective. But someone like Oscar Gonzalez uh, at $2,600, he's likely to bat in the middle of the lineup. Good numbers in AAA. I don't mind him as part of a a one-off or a mini sack. So honestly, I think that value for today, a hitter isn't bad. Gonzalez is a good option. Harris, I talked about. If Duval plays, you could get to him for the Braves. Carpenter, maybe Gallo, I guess. You know, we'll try to avoid that, but I might not be able to. So I think that the value options for today are actually not all that terrible, which should make it easier to get to your coal stacks, even with like Rizzo and Judge in there too. I think you can make that work pretty easily. So I think pitching is attainable. Good pitching is attainable for tonight, for sure. Let's finish up the week with some dinger calls for today. The boring one, it's very boring. I'm sorry, but it's Aaron Judge. I just love the spot here for Judge uh, facing off against in a matchup where I think that we have to stack the Yankees. Again, Rodriguez lets up a ton of fly balls. So Aaron Judge, as boring as it gets for the first home run call for today. The fun one, I got a lot of options. I could go Carpenter, but that means two Yankees. I think that if you're looking for like a betting selection, I haven't seen Carpenter's odds. So that's a dumb recommendation. If you haven't seen the odds, the odds always matter. Would look at him, uh, look into him. They could go Kiermaier, you could go G Choi, guys like that. I think that they're in play, but I will go Michael Harris. He, power was not his like calling card necessarily in AAA, but he's got speed, got a massive outfield at Coors Field. Maybe we go fun and say inside the park home run for Michael Harris. I'm not really sure, but I will say Aaron Judge and Michael Harris as the home run calls for today. Oscar Gonzalez, another guy to check into if you're looking for some uh, fun home run calls for this Friday slate. That is all that we have here for today on the MLB side of things. But as mentioned, NASCAR and UFC coming up later on today on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. So go search for it, hit subscribe. If you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review. Uh, if you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your DFS lineups. Enjoy the fantastic pitching slate that we've got, a fantastic weekend. We'll talk to you once again next week. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.